Hi guys, it's Hatchwell Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today, I am doing a spotlight on And Fragrance. It is the brand new, brand new fragrance line to come from Simon Constantine. If you don't know who Simon Constantine is, he is, I was gonna say part of the Lush family, but he literally is Lush. He is the son of Mark Constantine, who is the owner of Lush. Simon is one of the main perfumers for Lush, so he has started his own line, which is really exciting. I used to work for Lush, big fan. So when I heard about this, I was thinking, must smell them for sure. So I got sent the samples. You know I love a sample set and I love a spotlight just to highlight some brands that are new or have never smelled before. And this one, every time I say and in this video, I'm gonna think of the brand now because that's what it is, and. So, first things first, I actually got sent two by mistake. Sorry, Simon, I'm not sure if that was meant to happen. I mean, yay for that. So what I'd really like to do is give away the second set of samples to one of my subscribers in the UK, so you can try them as well. Um, they're really, really cool, and I'll tell you all about them individually in a minute. So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can enter the competition and win them. And I hope Simon doesn't string me up for doing this, but I'm passing along the goodness. So stay tuned. So the message of this brand is something that I need to talk about at the beginning because it's a very strong message. As far as I know, Simon goes on lots of, I'm going to call them missions. Um, he travels a lot. He travels the world. and the, this brand's message, ethos, uh, mission statement, I guess, is all about sustainability and Simon works very closely with the people that are in particular areas where the ingredients in these fragrances are sourced to help them, to help sustain the material, to help their lives in some way or protect the areas that they live in that are being deforested just all that kind of stuff so i'll read you the little bits of information about each one as i go through but it's a great message and i and i really enjoyed wearing them i wore each of these fully over five days full on skin tests so this isn't a first impressions i have actually worn these so without further ado i'll put their website link below Let's smell them. So, as I'm just fiddling around with these, my biggest question when I heard about them, and I think it's a valid question, is are they gonna smell lushy? Because lush is very distinct, and obviously Simon's been responsible for making lots of the perfumes there, so, I mean, it wouldn't have been a bad thing, but if you're wondering the same thing, they don't. They feel very, very separate from the way that lush perfumes smell. Just in case you're one of those people that doesn't really get along with lush perfumes, I do. <laughs> I have lots and I love them, but um, I just thought I'd point that out. Actually, one of them does remind me a little bit of something lushy, but that's it. So at the moment, they come in 10ml sprayers. I think that they are working on doing 50ml bottles, which is exciting. But I'm just going to go and dive in. So the first one on the list, the names are really cool. They all have an A in them because of the whole and thing. So I'm going to start with uh, Frank. It's called Frank. Let me just find it in here. This one, see, I've, I've pretty much used all of them. Please focus, camera. No? Oh my God, I did the YouTuber thing, guys. I did the YouTuber thing. Anyway, this one is called Frank, as in Frankincense. So let me just read a little bit about um, what, what it says in the book. The whole little book thing is really funny. It's got that typical, I guess, tongue-in-cheek language that you find with the Lush family. <laughs> I'm not going to keep comparing them because this is a solo project, but, um, you know, it stems from it in some kind of way, I guess. So it says here, the precious golden tears of resin from the frankincense tree has been lovingly harvested by at least 20 generations of families who control the Mada Mog or Mada Mog, Mada Mog. More recently, though, a deadly combination of drought and economic pressures have pushed the trees to the edge of extinction. So it says, by sourcing our frankincense directly from communities like the Marder Morgue, we can put money directly back into developing nursery sites and to work with the tragically displaced communities to support their fragile livelihoods, which, to be frank, we're rather proud of. So every single one of these fragrances has a message like that, and they're all from different parts of the world. So let me tell you how this one smells. This one <coughs> threw me for a loop 
what Simon was going for here was not the frankincense incense type of smell because let me tell you frankincense is not incense even though it sounds like it is by the name it's only incense once it's burned once it's burned to create fragrant smoke that's when it becomes incense and it is used a lot to create incense smoke before that frankincense actually smells limey to me it smells like lime it's coniferous it's got like an evergreeny type smell and that's exactly what this one smells like this is a bright fragrance there's a lot of lemongrass in here i can smell so it's it, or, or if it's not lemongrass it's something like lemon verbena it's not lemon or a citrus but it's definitely got that in there oh it's really nice so this is a really vibrant uplifting fragrance the frankincense here shows its lime like facets the bright greenery that frankincense has as opposed to being a, a, as opposed to being a church perfume and i really like it it's invigorating and it's friendly so uh, i like that if you like lemongrass and your kind of summery style fragrances this one is great it also says here frankincense bet you're thinking dark churchy dusty incense and smells of a dodgy pipe smoking priest's frayed robes fact is frankincense can be fresh and fruity seriously what we do with this arcane and noble fragrance is close to a miracle a true celebration of fun fresh and fruit you heard you heard it's a very english thing to say drop in the h there and not in any creepy old clergy or a spooky gothic church in sight thank god so yeah open textured bright lemongrassy kind of fizzy smelling i really liked this one not my favorite of the bunch but this one was good i this one's longevity on me wasn't as long as some of the others as well but i think that's just the nature of it because it's got a few more kind of volatile ingredients in it brighter lighter things but yeah, this was good. It's kind of woody as well. And this one woke me up when I first wore it. So moving on to the next one. So the next one is called Mad. And it's Mad as in Madagascan Vanilla. It says here, Vanilla is a sweet answer. I won't do, I won't do the, the YouTube thing every time because it's annoying. <laughs> so I'll just talk about the perfume. Vanilla is a, is a sweet answer to livelihood problems and to deforestation. Its value is almost at an all-time high, so profits, when used with integrity and not siphoned off by financial bully boys or local crooks, can be used to support essential tropical forestry programs. So sadly, the island itself has one of the world's highest rate of deforestation, but simply stopping won't help. It won't provide an income for the people or improve their longer-term prospects. But by developing and distributing this fragrance, we will work with Madagascar's threatened communities to build social, economic and ecological resilience. Sweet indeed. So some of the descriptions have notes listed and some of them don't, which I like, because then you'll, you have to make your own conclusions. But this one says it is vanilla, obviously, because we're talking about Madagascan vanilla here, which apparently is seen as the best. I know it's not the most expensive, but it's definitely the best. Uh, we're not talking about ice cream or a shot of vanilla goo in a skinny latte. It's blended with ylang ylang, vetiver, violet musk, jasmine and cloves. So this is the one that did remind me of something lushy more than any of the others. And that's not a bad thing, like I said, because I love lush fragrances. And I have one that this twang something in my brain and it's called Death and Decay. It's the ylang thing going on. So this one to me has something, it's obviously vanilla, but it's got a very distinct almond note here as well. So this is a smooth, not overly sweet vanilla, which I like because I'm not into gourmands that much. And vanilla, I've said it before, vanilla is vanilla. It's been done. So it's nice to have something that is a little bit spicy, smooth almond, the vanilla is, to me, not at the massive forefront at the beginning. It's actually behind. And, oh, this is, it's kind of creamy, but it's not ice creamy. It, that's not what it is. It's not like a, a smooth, fluffy, typical vanilla or a typical gourmand in any way. You've got some 
added things there like this almond and stuff and ylang i i'm a huge fan of ylang ylang so that's probably why i really like this one this one did last a really long time i put all of them on at 11 o'clock I, I didn't put all of them on at 11 o'clock i put each of them on at 11 o'clock uh in that day so this one did stay on me for a really long time at six o'clock i could still feel it and I like it. I like that it's a vanilla fragrance without being an in-your-face, I am vanilla. There's enough other stuff going on here to make it interesting. Simon sees it as an ecosystem in a bottle, which I think is pretty cool too. It's got enough, um, shall I say, bite to it. That's what I like. Like I've said, it's not all about vanilla. There's enough woodiness here. There's a bit of spice. It's really good. It's really well balanced. It, you get a lot of things at once where it's, you know, vanilla doesn't outshadow everything else. So I'm going to move on to the next one. The next one is called Bear, <clears throat> and this one is about Canada and the forests there. It says, ah, cedar. Old school floors, air freshener in the downstairs loo with a top note of disinfectant. Yeah, right. This delicious fragrance encapsulates, encapsulates the living heart of the forest with lingering and enigmatic essence of the great bear rainforest with sustainably sourced ingredients from within its bosom that help maintain the, this breathtaking but threatened environment, its wonderful wildlife and its ancient peoples. Does it pack a punch? Do bears. Is that meant to continue on to say, do bears shit in the woods? So it's about conifer tree oil, uh, carefully selected using only branches and needles, so protecting the trees themselves. So that's similar to another one coming up. They're not cutting down these trees to get the oil. They're carefully keeping the trees alive by selecting the needles and things like that. So that's pretty cool. It's about the indigenous people of the Great Bear Rainforest. And uh, yeah, it's about sustainability, this one. So. This one, when I tried it, oh my gosh, I had to smell it so many times because there was one note in it that I was so familiar with but couldn't quite put my finger on. You know when something's just right there on the tip of your tongue but you can't figure it out? And then it hit me. So what I smell in this one is spearmint, actually. It's got that smooth, creamy spearmint which is i love spearmint to eat especially <laughs> um it's so different from peppermint and this is gently sweetly foresty it definitely has that evergreen feel it's got the the spearmint smooths all of the pininess that's in there never once does it go to disinfectant stage pine evergreeny notes like that are always if they're not done right, they're in danger of just making you feel like you've sprayed pine soul on yourself or just one of those cheapy pine disinfectant floor cleaner things, which they mentioned in the book. But this is nice. You can, I feel like I'm smelling tree sap, that sort of waxy tree sap kind of smell with a gentle pininess. And it's, it's kind of powdery a little bit as well sometimes. But in the opening, there's a definite spearmint note, which doesn't stay the whole time but it is there and it does contribute to washing over the forestiness that happens in the opening, which I thought was really cool. I can feel the cedar wood start to come out a little bit more and cedar wood is another thing that I'm kind of over. I know it's in everything, but in this one, it manages to be cool. It's not, um, oh, it's just another cedar wood. And that's the same of all of these. They're not just another anything. So that's why I like them. And I feel like there's something sweet in here, like there's a very light sweet resin, it could possibly be something like benzoin or something like that, because it's almost touching on vanillic way down on the forest floor somewhere. As far as foresty scents go, this one's a nice one. If you like things like Cape Heartache by Imaginary Authors, it gives me those kind of vibes, still with the sweetness in it and stuff like that. There's no fruitiness here, but there is a something powdery so it's a, a powdery forest fragrance it's not a sharp bracing i'm just wearing pine disinfectant it's really nicely put together so we're going to move on to the next one which is my favorite from the entire line i love this one so this one is actually the first one i heard about when i heard about the brand it may have been the first release from the brand. There are five now, but I'm sure this one could have been the first one. I could be wrong. And it's listed on Fragrantica as Magic Bean. I don't know if that's what it used to be called and then it got changed, 
or if Fragrantica made a bit of a boo-boo with that one, but it's called Bean, as in Tonka Bean. Now, if you, like me, love Tonka, sometimes you just want Tonka. It's such a gorgeous note. I think it's so lovely. It's way better than vanilla, and I think Simon agrees because it says, for far too long, Tonka has been sacked off as a poor man's vanilla. Not in my opinion, I think it's way better. But no one should put this baby in the corner. It act in actual fact, its warmth and richness make it a classic in its own right. And once you've chucked in ethically sourced sus sustainable Brazilian orange oil, lavender, neroli and fennel, you're really cooking all oomph and sophistication like a rich, yummy posh pudding with none of the calories or the guilt. Blooming delicious. So this one, is about the Amazon rainforest and there's the indigenous people that live there, they're called the Kayapo. It says that the humble tonka bean has come from the Dictrix odorata tree, fruit of the Amazon, the lungs of the world. It requires native forests to sustain it and native people to harvest it. So the more we use, the longer the forest remains standing. And by standing shoulder to shoulder with these proud ancient people, we are doing our best to protect them from the ravages of so-called progress, simple. So this one I absolutely love. Oh my gosh, if you want a full on Tonka fragrance, which I do, then this one's gonna be for you. The Tonka here is so rich. It's almost verging on smoky. And you can really smell fennel here. So it's got that licorice related kind of aniseed sort of smell going on with the tonka at first. The fennel doesn't stay prominent throughout the whole wearing, but oh my gosh, it's lovely. There's really light florals in here coming from the neroli, but tonka is the star of the show and it ticks every box for me when you just want that rich, sweet, hay-like, almost vanillic, woody smell that Tonka gives you. It's here in abundance and this is the, the balm. This is the balm. This is the bean. This is, this is the bean of all the beans. I can feel just a tiny little spark of orange here, but when this one dries, and let me tell you, this one lasted one of the longest. The next one is the longest lasting one out of all of them. This one I could smell till seven, eight, when I was walking around my house, I was still catching wafts of this so many hours later. But where this goes is, to me, it's like almost full on single note Tonka, which isn't a bad thing because Tonka is complex and beautiful. And, oh, this is the, a gourmand that I just want to wear. It's only gourmand from Tonka. It's not got any other things in there that make it feel foody. It's just, tiny bit woody, like I said, a little bit smoky, glorious tonka bean, just all over the place. And um, yeah, it's, it's the standout for me. I think I'm gonna wear this one today after this video. Really, really like it. Anyway, we're moving on to the last one, which for me is the most long lasting, and also it's the most journey fragrance of the bunch. It's the one that changed the most and revealed lots of other different characters. So let's talk about that one. So for this one, it's called Sand, as in sandalwood. I was lucky enough to go into a Zoom meeting with Simon and a few other people, a few other bloggers and stuff like that, and hear a lot more in depth about this one. Simon went into a lot of detail about sandalwood, how it's obviously over harvested, and there are sandalwood pirates in the world that steal it from places. This is about Australian sandalwood, which is really important to Simon. He went to, uh, I think, India as well at one point, he talked about and talked about the sandalwood there and how people steal it and things like that. It was a really cool Zoom. So this one says, we are proud to be partnering Duke Jan, the sandalwood producers and winner of the UN Equator Prize. They are a groundbreaking company, authentically partnered with both industry experts and indigenous ownership to bring high quality Santalum Spicatum to the world stage. So this is all about Australian sandalwood, like I said. This one here is doing a good thing because they are not, how do I put this into word? They're only distilling dead wood. So they're only distilling sandalwood that is already expired, RIP, that kind of thing. <laughs> they're not damaging living sandalwood trees to, to get the sandalwood oil out of it. So 
That's a good thing too, yay! So sand is imbued with the essential oils gathered using the niche speciality of dead wood. Standing dead wood found and distilled, so no trees are destroyed to make it. In addition, Dutjan is helping restore degraded farmland with sandalwood and establishing mixed agroforestry to help them improve the biodiversity of climate-stressed Western Australia. Bloody good on them, it says. So this is what the fragrance isn't. <laughs> I like the fact that it's about this is not what it is, like the, the frankincense one not being a, a smoking priest's robes or whatever it was. It says cigar boxes, Camden Market bong shops reeking of joss sticks, old lady soap, sandalwood sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap. Undaunted, we've taken the dependable old fave and turned it on its head. We've tracked down a unique Australian sandalwood, versatile enough to handle hints of outlandish but ethically and sustainably sourced banana, cardamom, black pepper, with weird and wonderful labdanum and benzoin resin, which all means that this is sandalwood unlike anything you've experienced before. So unlike the bong shop, it won't make your hair stink for weeks. So this one is the most complex, like I said. Where's the little thing gone? I can't find you. This one I actually have a 10 mil of as well. So I've worn this one, I think the most out of all of them. Oh, this one's got a lot going on. So it doesn't immediately strike you as a sandalwood fragrance. This is all about spice here for me. I smell a really strong clove note. It's kind of got a dry texture to it. And it's essentially the spicy of the collection, I would say. None of the others are as spicy as this one. There's a sweetness here. I can smell, it almost feels like aniseed again. And it's got a touch of something fluffy going on. Maybe that is the sandalwood. Sandalwood is powdery and stuff like that, you know. It feels a bit, it makes me think of Christmassy things. That's only because the brain goes to there when you smell things like cinnamon and cloves and stuff like that. So I really like this one. It's got a smokiness going on as well. And this one develops and develops and develops. It turns into kind of an ambery feeling. In the dry down, I get a whole bunch of vetiver actually, probably more than the sandalwood and that's probably because sandalwood is quite a subdued note a lot of the time and vetiver is not vetiver is hello i'm vetiver i'm gonna i'm gonna take over you right now but i i personally smell a lot of vetiver in there i don't know if it's in there or not this is just my experience guys but i really like this i think it's really autumnal or it's really suited to autumn so i'll be wearing mine a lot more now that the weather's turned a bit colder so if you like your spicy and sweet fragrances, if you like sandalwood, because I can feel it lingering there in the background, but with a little bit of um, vetiver going on and a little bit of resin, this one's got a lot of facets and it was one of the most exciting ones after I, you know, swooned over Bean. But um, sand is really, really cool too one of the best and this one is the longest lasting this one i could smell into the night i put it on at 11 and when i went to sleep that night i could still smell this close to skin but i could still really smell it so that one's the strongest and longest lasting so that wraps up my video briefly in my head briefly probably not briefly talking about and fragrances by simon constantine really really fun bean being the favorite but all of them have something about them. There's probably something for everyone here. Touches on gourmand, there's a spicy, there's a foresty, there's a resinous, there's a, there's a woody, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So anyway, to win this sample set of and fragrances, because YouTube are dumb, dumb dummies and they've taken away the private messaging system, you're gonna have to message me on Instagram. Sorry if you don't have Instagram, but I would have been able to contact you directly through YouTube if they didn't take away the messaging system. So come over to my Instagram. It's at out 110 fragrance reviews. I'll put the thing here. I'll put the link in the description. Just send me a private message saying I'd like to be entered and I will pick somebody and get it sent to you. That's all you need to do. Pretty simple. I don't like to overcomplicate things. So that's it. And fragrances. Check them out if you like. I'm out 110 trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. Goodbye.